Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla, and today I wanted to do an arts tips and trick video, and I want to talk to you guys about why you need watercolor paper to do watercolor projects. I have three good reasons why, but I also have these various types of watercolor paper. We have cold press, hot press, and then we have two regular um, basic types of watercolor paper you have seen before. I'm going to tell you my favorite watercolor paper that I absolutely love to use for every single watercolor project. I do not stray away from my favorite paper. It's one of these four and I'm going to save that for last. But let's go ahead and take a re look at why you don't want to use regular computer paper. Okay, here's a regular piece of computer paper, and let's say you want to go ahead and do a watercolor piece. You've got this tree in mind, you saw it, and you're like, oh, I really want to do this on a piece of paper. I have some watercolor. Let me grab a piece of computer paper or regular sketchbook paper. It will not work because computer paper is not built up for water. It's not ready for it. <laughs> it's not prepared. When you throw a ton of water on, on a piece of computer paper, once you start moving around the watercolor, it's going to start crumbling up. And it's almost like if you took a Crayola marker to a piece of paper, a computer paper, and you keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you see these little, little elements start coming up and making little crumbles all over the paper, guess what? That means your paper's about to rip pretty soon. And not to mention that the paper is just not built for watercolor. So it's going to crinkle and it's going to morph. And unless you, I mean, all watercolor paper will kind of go upwards. But you know, watercolor paper, it's better when it's on the actual paper that is prepared to take large amounts of water as opposed to computer paper, who is not ready for that. It's ready for ink. It's not ready for watercolor. So let's start with one brand. This is Hobby Lobby's uh, Master Touch watercolor paper. So it's their standard brand paper. For example, Michael's Artist Loft uh, brand watercolor paper. If you were going to Michael's, I went to Hobby Lobby for this paper. So I made doodles, little example doodles from one of my favorite uh, YouTubers book, Pick Candle. So I made these doodles from her book and I'm just going to go ahead and compare and what I think about each of these watercolor papers and what you should look at. So Master's Touch is a good standard watercolor paper that you should most likely take a look at because it's a good place to start. So you're headed in the right direction, you grab the cheapest one and this was the cheapest watercolor paper there because it was Hobby Lobby's standard watercolor brand paper. This would be the same if you went to Michael's or any other of your local art shops that have this kind of paper. I like this paper because it can handle large amounts of water. Um, I was able to layer on top of it. It is not a cold press and it's not a hot press. It's somewhere in the middle. So we have some texture as you saw at the beginning. I see more of a crosshatch in a way. I see more of a, a knitting with this paper as opposed to any other kind of direction that's going on. But if you can look, you can see that we have the horizontal lines going across the vertical lines, just giving that good looking crosshatch kind of feel to it. Okay, let's step it up a notch and let's go to that kind of medium quality. So we went from Master's Touch, now let's go to an actual name brand we all recognize, Canson Watercolor Paper. Canson is a big brand company of paper. This is their cold press paper. Now I remember I, remember I said in the last one that if you're gonna start getting a little bit more professional with your watercolor pieces, go with a cold press. Now, there are two cold press papers that I like. This Canson is not my favorite cold press paper, but you can see that it has more of a texture. So we don't have the master touch crosshatch looking going on. We have more of a bumpy surface right here. And that's what cold press stands for. That means it's more available for more water and more detail. And I love cold press paper because it gives me a chance to let my puddles dry and the way that it dries comes out in a fantastic fashion. Now this Canson watercolor paper is the paper that I have my students use in my art class because one, it's inexpensive, two, it is a name brand and it's able to hand handle tons and tons of layers because 
it's built up for that and it's a real watercolor paper. So if you use this watercolor paper, you're gonna get a fantastic result. And this is a good standard art class watercolor paper. It also can handle acrylic painting. So if you want, instead of using canvas sheets, if you want a more exp inexpensive approach to it, I would suggest you use this Canson watercolor paper because it's thick enough to not only handle your watercolors, but it can also handle your acrylic paint. So let's head to my least favorite watercolor paper. This is called a hot press. There is no texture whatsoever on this Fabriano watercolor paper. Hot press is very similar to actual computer paper. When I was working on this type of paper, this is not the first time I've actually worked with this watercolor paper before. I actually got uh, postcards from either Sketchbox or Scrawlerbox. I do believe it was Scrawlerbox that sent it to me, but they gave me these postcards in their watercolor paper of hot press and it is ridiculous how low quality of paper it is because it didn't seem like it could handle the watercolor paint, uh, the actual watercolor paint. So it's just, I found it interesting that this watercolor paper can't handle large amounts of water because it's back to the computer paper when you start to see your little elements kind of gather and you see these little itty bitty specks from your paper start to come up into the puddle and they start making their own kind of weird looking texture and you don't want it there. That's what I was seeing with this hot press paper. And you can start to see it even when I was putting on the first layers. So hot press watercolor paper is not my favorite. Um, I think that Fabriano makes more different types of supplies and brands. I don't know. It's not my chosen brand. I just wanted you guys to all see the hot press paper even on the front it doesn't even look like the watercolor painting they have for an example doesn't look like there's many layers and I believe fully that watercolor should be tons and tons of layers just like an acrylic painting this is a painting so we need to have lots and lo lots of layers on it because without layers you're not gonna have that much definition when it comes to watercolor paper when you want to do a big scenery piece with lots of detail so this is my least favorite watercolor paper because it, it, hot, it is hot press and it has no texture whatsoever. Last but not least, let's get to my favorite watercolor paper. And you can see I already scribbled all over it because I have been using this watercolor paper for the longest time ever. And I did start out with Canson. I started out with Art Artist Loft and Master's Touch watercolor paper, but I have grown to adore Strathmore's 300 series cold press watercolor paper. I love Strathmore just in general. I've had several sketchbooks of their paper. I adore the Strathmore brand so much and it's but it came through trial and error that I discovered this cold press paper so you can see the texture is much much thicker you have little itty bitty rivets and a lot of people they really don't like cold press watercolor paper but it's all based on your own opinion as an artist when it comes to watercolor it's your choice when it comes to paper it's totally up to you but I adore cold press paper because it gives me more leeway to make my puddles of watercolor and let them dry and they dry in this fantastic sense plus it gives me a chance to do more detail I love this brand I've tried the Canson brand and I've tried other different cold press papers but I'm not a huge fan of it like I am the Strathmore and I have tried to stray away I've tried the moleskin um, watercolor sketchbooks but I don't know it's just the fact that if I don't like the paper it kind of makes it puts up an artist block in my head that I can't work with this paper paper is a huge part of watercolor or in pieces in general you cannot put watercolor on a canvas because if it's a canvas and it's only built for acrylic painting the watercolor isn't really gonna work out so that's why you go for more of a watercolor type my biggest point is I haven't really named off a one two and three yet one is going to be the quality of your piece that's why you should have watercolor paper for watercolor the quality of your piece will be better if it's on the appropriate piece of paper two 
is that it's durability. Because if you use a computer piece of paper, it's going to crinkle and not have the lifespan that it should have. It could break in the middle of the process of layering on top of layers. And I've always found that to be the biggest problem is that the quality and durability are not working and people always ask me how is it that I can't watercolor well. It's probably because you have the wrong type of paper and that could be used through hot press as well or if you're using Bristol board because you have to have a watercolor paper that says watercolor whether it's cold press or if it's a more of a medium standard brand watercolor paper. But the point is you have to feel it. If you like the texture of the paper and if it feels thick to you, you have to try it. That is a huge thing. So next time you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby, stand in the aisle of the paper aisle <laughs> and feel the paper. It, it sounds weird, but I stand in the aisles of art stores all the time and I feel paper because I gotta see if I like it and if I can even work with it. And there is a certain kind of feel that I like, is especially the cold press. The cold press is what I always go for. I can feel it. I, even when I'm looking at other brands' cold press paper, I feel the paper. This seems repetitive, but my third point is that if it's built for it, use it for that medium. So yeah, those are my three reasons why you need watercolor paper for watercolor projects. That's quality, durability, and if it's built for it, use it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you all have a most wonderful day. Leave in the comments down below what other videos you would like to hear about or more uh, tips and tricks. So yes, I'll talk to you all later. Bye!